Hey guys, it's Brie. So today's video is going to be a little bit different from pretty much all the other videos I've done. I was contacted very recently, like a day or two ago, by a lady who told me that she was a transgender woman and that she was trying to find a way to kind of simulate her period because as far as I'm aware, um, women who are transgender can't actually experience periods naturally. They haven't found a way to make that possible. I don't believe, I did try and do a little bit of research but I couldn't really find anything on it. And there didn't seem to be any information on whether or not a, transgen a transgender woman could menstruate. Um, but at, at the moment, I don't believe that's possible. I'm just gonna go down a bit. Good thing about sitting on stools, I can go up and down. Um, but yeah, I offered to help her and I thought while I was at it, I might as well just make a video out of it and put it up here because maybe it would help some of you guys too. Um, so I'm gonna do how to kind of create some fake menstrual blood that you could put either on a pad or if you um, are a transgender woman who's had her genitalia changed, so from a penis to a vagina, then you can also try maybe using a menstrual cup. And there is a way to do it that I found, so I will show you that. Um, for those of you who don't really know, a transgender woman is someone who was born male, but identifies as being female, so identifies as being a woman. Uh, a transgender man would be someone who was born female, but identifies as being male. Um, so yeah, it doesn't necessarily mean that as a transgender woman that she's had a sex change, so that um, she's had her, uh, any transgender woman doesn't necessarily mean they've had their penis turned, uh, penis and testicles turned into a vagina. Um, some of them will have, some of them won't. I believe you have to pay in the US, um, although in the UK it's free on the NHS. So um, yeah, I'll just, I'll get into it I guess. I'll start off with the pads. I'm afraid the only disposable pads I have at the moment that I have left are the Always Secure Nights ones, which I've bought as a comparison for a customer. So I'm gonna do it with disposables because I am gonna be using food coloring, which I'm pretty sure will stain some of my cloth pads, but um, you could also use cloth and uh, other alternatives with this if you don't mind getting them stained. So to make the fake menstrual blood, you will need some water. I've just put some in the mug. Black food coloring and red food colouring and also corn flour. I tried to use everything that was edible because I figured if it was edible you could also put it in your vagina. Just seemed like it wouldn't be dangerous. Um, and I'm also going to use a plastic cup so you can see this better. So to start off with I'm going to take three tablespoons of water. One, two, Three, doesn't matter if this is like correct or not, actually I'm going to do four, I'm going to make this a little bit more. Then I'm going to take a tiny, tiny bit of corn flour. Let me get some in. So I realise, also you could probably do this for other things, not necessarily menstrual blood, but it looks quite realistic. So you see I'm not even going to use all of that, I'm just going to put a tiny little bit in. So about that much. And the idea of this is just to turn the water slightly opaque. Don't worry if there are any little like lumps and bumps. So there you can see the water's now gone cloudy. We need the corn flour anymore. Then you need your food colouring. So I'm actually just going to grab quickly some lovely rubber gloves because the food colouring does like like to stain your fingers. You can see my finger from yesterday when I was trying this out. Um, so I'm just going to do that very quickly. I highly recommend you get this type of food colouring. This is the silver spoon which is in like a squeezy bottle. It doesn't get all over your fingers unlike this one which gets everywhere. So I'm going to do one full cap of this which I guess would be the equivalent to like half a teaspoon and just pour it in. I'm not going to put the cap on, I'm just going to leave that there. And I'm just going to turn it to my finger. I'm going to mix this up. Take my gloves off. Mix it up right now. So it should be this kind of like, hang on, let me turn the camera down a bit. So you can see here, it's this really kind of dark red consistency. Then I'm just going to add in one to two drops of black. So one. 
probably two realistically, but I start off with one because black is a very, very strong food colouring colour. You can see there, it's nice and dark. And that is the effect you're going for. And actually I might still add in one more drop. Okay, we're done with the black. Mix it up again so that it's really nice and dark. And I do actually have, um, if you were kind of grossed out about blood, I'm not really sure why you're watching this, but anyway, I have saved some of my blood from uh, my cycle this month. I only remember to do this on the fifth day of my cycle, so I was very, very light. But this is what I kind of held on to. So you can see it is really dark. It's surprisingly dark. If I can just grab a small teaspoon or tablespoon of this fluid, you can kind of see that yes, this one's a bit red, but they are both very dark. Menstrual blood's a lot darker than many people think. So that's the kind of comparison between the two. So to show you how it look on a pad, I'm just gonna grab one of the always overnights out and just stick this down on the table here. And open the wings up. So here I'm just going to grab one tablespoon and you'll see this is about the, well actually a little bit less than that, it's probably about the average amount one woman would bleed um, on a regular day, maybe if she was had a regular heavy period, between three to four hours. So this would be the amount you'd need just for um, one pad wearing session. I would always change my pads every uh, three to four hours when I was using disposables. So I'm going to pour this along. I'll add some more because it's an overnight pad. And I would always bleed in the middle here. And then kind of trail towards the back of it. So let's do a little trail here. That would literally be what mine looked like. So you can sort of determine the pattern of how you bleed. Some women bleed right to the front of their pads. Some women bleed just in the center. Some of them always bleed to the back. Um, it, it determines, it's determined by which way your cervix is kind of tilted really, but uh, you'll figure it out very quickly. So you can kind of determine where you want to bleed and also how much liquid you make will determine how heavy a period you have if you're going to simulate it. So I put it on about that much and then I'd wear it and if it feels damp, you get the right sensation. That's what we all have to deal with. And now I've just got food colouring all over my hands. So yeah, that's the downside to using food colouring. It is probably going to stain you a little bit, but then again, we're already pink down there anyway, so it won't look any different, to be that honest. And if I peel it up, you can see how it looks on the back. It looks very realistic as well. Front and the back. Now, the next option you have for using, um, you know, this fake menstrual blood is to put it in a menstrual cup. And I was kind of wondering, I wouldn't do it with a tampon, um, simply because it's not a good idea to do that with an absorbent fiber and leave it in your body. Um, but you could do this with a menstrual cup. And I was trying to figure out how that would work because you have to fold the menstrual cup up in order to insert it. But I realized the one cup this might work with and I tried it out with and it did work was the Femi Cycle because of its um, no spill rim, like you can see here. So this is the best cup I discovered. And um, what you're gonna have to do is put the little rim thing in, take just about just under a tablespoon of the fluid, do it over this of course, and then pour it into the cup. Okay, so we can get that last little bit in there. Now this is designed to be a no spill cup because of this. There might be a drip or two, but basically you can turn it, turn it upside down and it won't leak. So I tried doing this yesterday by folding it up to insert it into me, and I squeezed the rim like so, hang on let me zoom in a bit. I squeezed the rim like this and then I folded it over like this and kind of held it loosely. And you can see I can still fold it whilst keeping all of that liquid in there. I inserted it, got it open, and I could leave it in me and get up and walk about and then actually hook my finger into the little loop, take it out, and then, you know, my body had actually warmed up the fluid. Within like a minute or two, it warmed up the fluid inside so it felt like when you're taking it out, it would feel warm, which is exactly how it feels like when you're taking real much blood out, and I've already stained my finger. <laughs> um, but then you can just pour it down the loo like you would, and 
wash out the cup and it will actually come completely clear it won't be stained like this although over time it probably will stain just like a normal menstrual cup so i hope you enjoyed this video guys on how to make this kind of like fake menstrual blood one thing i do want to just say is if you want to make this even more realistic and it would only really work if you're going to use the uh the menstrual cup i've just washed it so it's by my sink uh, the menstrual cup is you can add some egg white into here so just crack an egg open over a bowl um, toss it back and forth between the shells holding onto the yolk then pour some of the egg white um, into this and you'll get that kind of clear cloudy consistency I don't think I've got enough blood in this one to show you no I haven't um, when I'm on a heavier day there will be quite a good amount of clear liquid in there it's just a mixture of cervical mucus and also lining of the uterus they make kind of like clotty um, egg white consistency. So you can add some egg white in there. I did do it yesterday, it looked very good. Unfortunately, I can't show you today because I used our last egg last night to do it. But um, that would just be my tip if you want to make it look even more realistic. However, if you're vegan, you can always leave that step out. Um, but yeah, I hope this video was useful for you guys. Um, I just thought it was a really important one to do and I generally hope it helped. If you are trying to structure how your period work, um, my suggestion would be get a period app and get it to ping you when you're nearing your period. Check out your calendar. I am very regular. I start every 28 days. So cycle day one would be the day my period starts and I bleed for about five days. And then on the sixth day I might spot a little bit so I'd wear a little liner. And then carry on counting one, two, three, five, six, on to 28. And then on the 29th day I'd start my period again which would become cycle day one. So you can kind of structure it to how heavy you want to be, you can decide how long you want to bleed. Some people bleed between, usually between three to seven days, so you can decide. But I hope this was helpful, you guys. Please subscribe, and thank you for watching. I will see you later. Bye.